Hey good folks, my name is Leif and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel called Devs and Dice. Now this show is called Boxes of Shame, where I each week try to paint up a miniature for Dungeons and Dragons. This week's miniature depicts a personal favorite of mine, the Mimic, or Mocking Beast as Reaper calls it. Actually, you know what? My very first uh, character death happened to uh, a Mimic. Now the great folks over at Army Painter sent over their uh, wet palette and a set of brushes for me to try out. So I actually ended up using them for uh, this paint up. This is actually uh, my uh, first package that I ever received and it's, uh, you know, it might be nothing for someone, but for me it's, it's actually a big thing. So thanks again Army Painter. So enough about that, let's have a look at how I painted up this miniature with many shapes and names. A couple of years ago I started getting into D&D. As my passion for D&D grew, so did my collection of minis. And like many others out there, I now have boxes of shame. This is me painting every single one of my miniatures. Alright good folks, so this is the Mocking Beast from Reaper Miniatures. The bed version. Now I am not sure what the story is with this ridiculously oversized packaging, but yeah. As you can see, this particular example had a very bad gap in the middle, which I filled using some uh, green stuff. But I started with shaving off some of those mode lines using my hobby knife. Now in my opinion, mimics need to have a large slimy tongue. So I took a paper clip, snipped it off, and I used that as an armature. I rolled out some of the green stuff to a cylinder and then just covered the paper clip. I sculpted the tongue best I could and then I used a toothpick to uh, add some nice nasty details. Once I was happy, I left them out to dry for about 24 hours. I primed the miniature and tongue with a flat black aerosol can. Now let's start with the painting. I added crusted sore, alien purple, and deep blue from Army Painter to the palette. I start with crusted sore and just do a very thinned out base coat. Working quickly, I come in with some of that alien purple which I try to wet blend in. And finally, some deep blue at the end. I let the paint dry and then repeat this step one more time. Once I was happy, I let it dry completely. I added some Army Painter Matte White to the palette and mixed it with the red Crusted Sword to get sort of a pinkish color. This I just dotted on the tongue for sort of extra details. Now this mini has a whole lot of brown in it and my palette of choice was Army Painter's Oak Brown, Dirt Spatter, Leather Brown and Monster Brown. Now I know I might burn in hell for this, but I decided to use the dry brush for a very sort of diluted base coat of oak brown. I generally like to work with larger brushes when it comes to base coats, and especially in an organic miniature such as this. So once the base coat was dry, I started painting in some wood grooves using Monster and Leather Brown. 
and then some edge highlighting on various parts of the mimic, the bed legs and well, so on. I introduced some chaotic red from Army Painter onto my palette. I diluted the paint with some water and started to sort of paint the mouth and, well, the lips and gums, I guess, the things on the side. I mixed in some crusted sore to get some sort of subtle variations. Then while things were drying, I continued the edge highlighting using Monster Brown and Leather Brown again. Okay, and here I'm just cleaning up some of that red uh, from the teeth. I just repaint them with some Oak Brown and Dirt Spatter. While that was drying, I figured I would start laying in some additional colors onto the mini, where the sort of illusion had started to morph. For this, I mixed the chaotic red, alien purple and crusted sore and made a glaze, which I thinly applied on the chin of the mimic, and then some on the back and, uh, well, eyebrows or whatever we want to call it. I did this with many, many thin coats to achieve a nice transition. The floor was quite nice, but I wanted some variation, so I went in with some pure leather brown on some of the boards. This would contrast the oak brown nicely. Now while I had that leather brown in my brush, I might as well start working on the transitions on the teeth. Time for one of my absolute favorite colors, Army Painter's Skeleton Bone. I used this to start laying in a brighter, more teeth-like color on, well, the teeth. I focused the first coat only on the tips of the teeth. Then I come back in with a more sort of diluted skeleton bone to make the transition a little bit more natural. While everything was drying, I figured I would add some matte black to the palette and start painting the rim of the base. Time to start working on the eyes. For this, I added some lava orange and phoenix flames to the palette. I first come in with several thin coats of lava orange, and then I add some yellow to highlight the eyes. Alright, the rest of the miniature is dry, so time to start working on some definition. My weapon of choice for this was Army Painter's Strong Tone. I basically add this all over the miniature, except the eyes and the very tips of the teeth. I am very careful about pooling, so I am going on quite thin at places. Now the second wash I used was Purple Tone from Army Painter. I used this to make those sort of shifting areas pop a little bit more in color 
As you can see, I'm doing this while the previous wash is still wet. These blend fairly well, so the transition should work nicely. Once the teeth started to dry, I came back in with some of that skeleton bone to make them pop a little bit more. And at this point, I just let everything dry. Now, once everything had dried, I started dry brushing in some of that monster brown on the base. Back onto the tongue. I used some super glue just to attach the tongue in its final position. Wow, that is disgusting. Perfect. And then I added a little bit of a dot of matte white in the eyes for some highlights. And to finalize this, I used some gun metal to hit the nails on the floorboards. Let's have a look at the final result. Alright folks, that's all she wrote. Thanks guys for staying with me to the end. I hope you liked the result and the video. If you have any questions, thoughts or comments, please uh, feel free to post them down in the comments section down below. And as always, if you like what I'm doing here, you know of a drill, like, share, subscribe, it helps the channel out. Now for you all wonderful folk that I've watched so far. Here comes another cultural present from Sweden. A Swedish proverb from old times. Finns det hjärterum, så finns det hjärterum. Which literally means, if there is heart space, then there is butt space. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so this is essentially our way of saying, where there is a will, there is a way. And I think this saying is particularly, uh, you know, been used if oh it, can i can i squeeze in and sit next to you if you're you know in the stance like ah of course if i like you i'm gonna say yes where if you're in my heart space then of course i will move and there will be butt space oh jesus why did i go with this one i'm not sure how much sense that actually makes but yeah all right with that i want to thank you for watching uh i wish you an awesome day and stay safe out there until next time.